guys, welcome back. This is episode 126, featuring the third part of my interview with the creator of Frayed Knights, Skull of Smackdown, Mr. Jay Barnson, also known as the Rampant Coyote. In this part of the interview, we start off uh, talking about some of the design decisions, uh, then we get personal. And I think you'll uh, really like this section where Jay talks about his uh, personal reactions to all of the criticism he's, his game has received, some very good, some very bad. I think you'll find that very heartfelt. And then uh, we wrap up uh, talking about budgeting for an indie, indie uh, game and uh, the lessons that Jay has learned along the way. A lot of great material. Uh, so without further ado, here is Mr. Jay Barnson. Well, speaking of... Uh... You know, reviews. I know a lot of people criticize games that they have uh, too much reading and too much text on the screen. And, you know, of course, they wouldn't criticize a game like Planescape Torment for that reason. That's, you know, a lot of the appeal. But, Heresy. You know, let, let's face it, uh, you know, not you, you, you happen to be a great writer, so it works out well. You know, there's lots of fun descriptions when you open up chests and such. But, you know, what do you say to those people that uh, they just don't get it and they, you know, they say, I, I want to play a game, not read a book? <sighs> Well, obviously, they never played Zork now, did they? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the same um, assumption. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I I get in the same the same mode uh, nowadays. I find myself skipping past a lot of the dialogue. And even if it's spoken, I skip past it because, you know, too often the voice acting is terrible. In fact, I think I read less now because I'm in too much of a hurry to <laughs> skip past it. Like, shut up, shut up! Um, <laughs> um but, uh, yeah, you know, I, it's definitely a point. I remember playing Daggerfall and, and, and Morrowind and stuff, and you get those books with their big descriptions. And, you know, if it doesn't, if I'm reading this thing and I, it doesn't have meaning to me, it's just, you know, here's some background information. Occasionally it's fun to read, but most of the time it's just like, okay, I, why do I care about some guy who did you know, he died in this fictional world a thousand years ago. I, you know, who cares? Um, if it's germane to me, then, you know, and what I'm doing, then it's a little more exciting. But um, I, I, I think a lot of cases it's, you know, we, we do get kind of into a different mode and sometimes, especially with action games, um, I think it might be a, a worse case with them because if you're in an action game, you, you know, your brain gets in a certain pattern and, you know, it's like, you know, fight, 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 press a button, press a button, you know, whatever, and uh, uh, A, B, A, B, left, right, left, right, up, down, whatever, anyway. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, when you're doing that, you really don't want to read, you know, you're, you're switching modes. I think in a turn-based game or something that's a, playing at, you know, I, I sometimes call it a thoughtful pace, although in a lot of cases, a turn-based game, it goes a lot faster than an action game because you can skip all the boring stuff and, you know, <laughs> move on. Um, but uh, I think in a turn-based game, it works a little bit better, Um and uh, you can move at a little bit more thoughtful pace, and you're not, you know, your 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 brain's not quite in that that regular pattern that it's in, and and you can take more time to read. There's still limits. I mean, uh, no no amount of anything is going to encourage me to read boring crap. I don't want to do that. And so I tried very hard in Fred Nights to to limit the boring crap as much as possible, which gets hard because you know I try to do funny stuff. But sometimes there's there's exposition that needs to take place. Dang it! You know I need to tell the player what's going on, and you know you you can force the jokes and get really really bad jokes, or you can just play it relatively straight and just say, okay, I'm just going to try and you know, have the characters get all interest, as interesting as they can, but otherwise, you know, it, it, it's got to be serious. I, I don't like the games where everything is just cornball. It drives me crazy. Um, and the other thing I did with Frayed Knights to try and break it up is to kind of do the, the comic book style thing where you had the, the word balloons that would appear for the characters so that you only had a little chunk that you had to read at a time. And I don't know, for me, somehow it made things a little easier. Um, you know, it, it, it seemed to work pretty well. And, and uh, I, I got a lot fewer complaints. I got a lot of complaints about people about the, the text and everything before they played the game, you know. But once they've played it, you know, and they've actually had a chance to try out the humor and, and to see how everything works. Uh, it's it's really it's really cool. A lot of people turn around uh, and uh, and say, "Okay, you know, all right, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was." So I actually enjoyed that. So I, I think there's still a place for for texting games. At least I hope so, because it you know it gets pretty stupid otherwise. <laughs> well, I think you did a great job on that. I, I love the part uh, when you walk into the like right when you leave the first dungeon, you go to a tavern, and one of your characters goes off for a while and his you know his ex-girlfriend 
his ex girlfriend. Like, wow, this is great stuff. Okay, but but about the dialogue system, uh, okay. you know, did you consider having some sort of letting characters pick options uh, for what characters would say? I think I still have that code sitting in the the game program somewhere, actually, where you do exactly that. Um, and I experimented with it. I did a lot of I did a lot of stuff because I I mean. Okay, I, I run a gaming blog, and you know, Tales of the Rampant Coyote, and a whole bunch of what I write is stuff where I, uh, you know, I rant about how everybody's doing it wrong. You know, oh, all these game developers, these especially mainstream game developers, they're so idiots. You know, they, they do this and they they shouldn't do it that way. And then I turn around, I do exactly the same thing. So you know, it's, you know, there's there's reasons why. And and uh, anyway, I I did experiment. I wanted a nice, you know. A very cool uh, conversation system with with topics and with with you know knowledge getting communicated between NPCs and I had some early early work that I did with them and and I had I had a some some a whole bunch of interface code that was all in there for it and it I think it probably most resembled like Morrowind or Betrayal at Crondor in in terms of kind of keyword type stuff and and uh, anyway I was I was a about three weeks into this and when I suddenly realized that uh, this wasn't the right game uh, you have to have whatever kind of game it is you know it has to it has to support its theme and I realized that this is a great idea maybe maybe it's a really stupid one but it was a great idea as I tell myself to stroke my own ego as I'm cutting my favorite little baby out of the game um, it's, uh, but it's, it's, it's a great idea for another game you know, someday I'll get back to that. I'll do that, and you know, right with the game where you you make your own characters from scratch because you know I generally prefer that too. But uh, this wasn't that that game, and you have to you know you have to be true to the game and try not to throw the whole everything, including the kitchen sink, with all your pet ideas of what would be awesome because there's just too much awesomeness in the world, and you know. <laughs> <laughs> to do it, and 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 no one game can control it can can contain all that. <laughs> now, if you had had the budget, you know, we talked a little bit about this uh, before, but you know, if you had the money uh, to do whatever you wanted, uh, would you have had professional voice actors uh, to do the voices? And who would uh, Patrick Stewart play? <laughs> um, you know, I I, I did uh, talk to some uh, to some voice actors. Actually, not for for Fred Knights, but there was another RPG that I was working on before Fred Knights. When uh, I realized that I had bitten off more than I could chew, and I'm like, okay, this is this is one to do after I've done Fred Knights because I realized I still had a lot to learn. Um, but I did talk to some voice actors and kind of price things out a little bit and, and, and realized that that was more money than I was going to find underneath these sofa cushions. Uh, so, but, so that was part of it. So budget was part of it. The other thing, though, I, I feel, um, and you could tell by a number of typos that found their way into the first release of Frayed Nights, the stuff that I added after my editor went over my text. I made a lot of changes <laughs> late in the game. You know, there's parts with beta testers. I mean, you get that. You know, you get in the beta testers and, and they come and they're like, I don't know what to do here, you know, or you know, so so why am I in this dungeon again? I don't get it. Or, you know, there's, there's lots of questions and there's times that you realize, okay, I need to add more dialogue, more exposition, and, and so forth. And um, in fact, I think Ken Ralston um, said something about this in a recent interview. Um, it would be nice if I had voice actors, like voice like the first line or, or give like a token uh, catchphrase or something for these characters so you could kind of assign a, you know, get a little bit of, of a character, because you know, a voice actor can do so much. I mean, they can add so much to their characters just from from their voices. Um, but I would not want to have the entire game voiced uh, because I think it really, it well, it hobbles you in a lot of way. And there's some other things, that, some cool things you could do with text, like um, let the character, you know, obviously not Frayed Knights, but in a lot of RPGs, you can you can have the player name their own character, whatever they want. Um, you know, if the whole thing is a voice, you do have to do the things where they kind of skip the player's name or, you know, whatever. And so uh, I, I think doing, I think Baldur's Gate, you know, that was something that the Infinity Engines did quite well is they, they gave a limited voiceovers. And uh, uh, I think I, I would like to do that. Uh, as far as who Patrick Stewart would play, uh, I think he would be best playing 
Ariana. <laughs> <laughs> he could, you know, he could probably pull it off. He could, if anybody could, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe, maybe Silas um, or uh, or uh, Kovac, the the former Goblin King. I'm not sure. Uh, hadn't thought about it uh, uh, too much. We've gotten a lot of great reviews. I mean, some people really love the game. You know, I, I, that's very clear. Uh, people really seem to be getting it. Um, now, looking over the reviews, though, positive and negative, uh, you've looked at them. Uh, so you. What has sort of stood out to you as a spot on, and uh, do you think people are being too harsh in some areas or being unfair to you? Well, obviously, everything that they say negative is too harsh, um, <laughs> but I agree 100% with the praise they've, they've lavished on uh, those parts of the uh, No, Actually, for the most part, and uh, this is uh, maybe I've, I've just been lucky so far as the reviews, the people who've actually bothered to, to do the review. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of places where I, you know, said, would you like to review my game? Here's the stuff. And I never hear back from them. And, you know, because I'm an indie, I'm not buying advertising space or anything like that. And, you know, to some degree, I'm like, okay, if, you, if you're really not interested in the game, I don't know if I want to force you, you know, force some guy who thinks that, you know, uh, uh, Mass Effect 2 was the, you know, the the pinnacle of our all RPGs going back and playing my game. I'm I'm kind of afraid of what they might say. Uh, you know, all the stuff that everyone else loves, he might hate. Uh, you know, what turn based? Who does that anymore? I can't um, shoot. <laughs> no, I shoot. This, this is, <laughs> Where's the ridicule? You know, <laughs> exactly. Um, so I, I've been kind of lucky that the the people who've done reviews of the game so far have have actually been, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe it's just a virtue of being indie. You know, they've been interested in the game enough in the first place to actually give it the time of day. And if they're interested in it, they get it, and and that's that's been awesome. So you know, for at least for my my reviews so far, I, I don't think it's going to hold out forever. I'm going to get some people who just don't get it. Um, I had a an indie game I did a few years ago. There, it was kind of the same thing. I think I learned a little bit about writing uh, doing that one because I, I I did a bad job of it. <laughs> I mean, it was there were some parts I was really pleased about, but I, I did the whole thing as a parody, and it was a little bit of a parody of the standard you know space opera uh, tropes and stuff. You know, like I did with Fred Knights. You know, I, I found something that kind of worked for me, or at least I didn't suck too terribly at, and I stuck with it. And maybe one day I'll not suck. Um, but the, the I, I remember I saw a review, and the guy just spent like a third of the review just ripping on the story, how stupid the story was and how it followed all these stereotypes and everything. I'm like, <laughs> why? That, that was the point. That was the joke. And, you know, I, I realized that, okay, maybe for humor, I, sh I should have included a few more fart jokes at the beginning. So he get it. That it was supposed to, yeah, <laughs> something like that. Um, so, you know, there's, there's always the, the guys that don't get it. Um, but, uh, you know, there's, there's some things. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of issues that, you know, some of them were, I can't say outside of my control with the game engine that I'm using, but because, you know, I've got the source code to it. Theoretically, I could go through this thing, this gigantic cluster or something or another that, you know, guys, you know, different programmers know, you know, you got like generations of programmers that worked on this code base and no one, even when it was currently being supported, really understood what everything was doing in there. And so it, it's, it's kind of a bear to mess with. Um, but, you know, there's always, you know, thing, anything in there that really bugged me, I was, you know, usually able to kind of figure my way through it and, and change the source code. So it's a little bit of a Franken engine and I'm never really sure, is this my bug or is this an existing bug and where is it in this, you know, uh, you know, million lines of source code. Uh, so there's some stuff there that were a little further outside my, my area of control. Um, and there's some things that, you know, are fair. Um, going from an indie budget, um, you know, it's it was a shoestring budget. I did this part part time, and you know, the money that I put into that was not going into my daughter's college fund, and so there's only so much I'm willing to sacrifice, especially when there's zero guarantees of making even a dime back from this thing. So you know, there's there's places where I had to skimp, and you know, it's places where I should have hired an artist to do stuff, and I didn't, or uh, a UI expert. Uh, there's a lot of stuff with the uh, the UI that was a little too old school, and I'm hoping to remedy with either with you know this this game or, or with the next one with updates. But uh, there's um, 
you know, and so there's a lot of things I read it, you know, and it's like, okay, the reviews actually are, are pretty fair. Um, you know, there's sometimes where one reviewer might, you know, especially if it's, you know, something on a fan forum, you know, where they take something that's, that's just minor. And you're not talking about RPG codex, are you? I'm. Just, I wouldn't mention that. The Steam. No. I, I love. I love the RPG Codex guys. I mean, except you know, sometimes, boy, they. I mean, it's. I think it's. A, you know, they. 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 They enjoy being as as brazen as possible. You know, they're, a lot of those guys. I mean, I'm. I'm there on the forums myself. Uh, you know, so, I'm. I'm part of that community. Um, but yeah, they. They. They are very. They. They've got their opinions, and they are. Are. Uh, they love to let you know them, <laughs> and uh, but again, they also there's a lot of things that they say that you know it's like they might take something, I think, way out of proportion, but their root point that they have to make, you know, it's like, well, okay, you you got a point. I you know you you think it's disaster and destroys the game, and I'm looking at this little tiny optional thing that appears in one part of the game, and yeah, you know. <laughs> I'm like, how does that ruin the entire game? I don't know, but hey, you know, okay, you know, it's okay. You, you know, you probably got a good point. That's maybe something I should I should either you know fix now or or try to avoid in the future. So you know, you, I think you need to take that. I, I don't have very thick skin. I mean, it, it gets hard. I've read some really harsh reviews of of my games in the past. You know, I was really lucky with Twisted Metal and Warhawk. You know, coming out with hit games out of the box to <laughs> right out of out of out of. Um, you know, my, as my first games, I got used to hearing rave reviews about my stuff and guys gushing with the, the, the game, the game press. I mean, it's, I think it's even worse now, but it was terrible back then. I mean, these guys were just so full of hyperbole and, you know, it's, everything is either wonderful gushing. Let's do all these kinds of masturbation metaphors <laughs> on the one side <laughs> or, oh, let's do all these kind of, you know, uh, you know, metaphors of something coming out of your backside on the other end. I mean, it's just, there's no in between with these guys, uh, with a lot of the press. And so I, I got very lucky when I first started the career and, and had all these things that made me feel really good and patted myself on the back and, and, you know, took a couple of crappy games that, you know, I, I, I had to learn that, uh, I, I sometimes it's hard to take criticism. <laughs> it really is. I'm human, and uh, you know, there's there's some things that you know they, they they say that you know the designers you know things that they think should happen that the designers deserve to have happen to them. It's just like, <laughs> what planet are you from, dude? <laughs> anyway, you know, just I know a lot of new designers and hop you know people doing this for a hobby must get these reviews and just want to rage quit. <laughs> does that game does that, I mean do you have advice or sort of coping strategies if you will for uh I don't how know how to weather I a storm I you know I, I cry myself to sleep I, really <laughs> um you know some of these guys they learn to uh, they, they I mean they learn, they get the thick skin and you know good for them I I guess I'm still developing that because it's funny you can have like 10 wonderful reviews that 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 you know proclaim your genius upon the mountaintops and then you get this one review that says you're Jeffrey Dahmer and, <laughs> and that one review spoils the other 10 i mean it's it's, it's a weird ratio is that one nasty criticism will 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 blow away all, tons and tons of praise so it it gets it gets really hard um the the thing that I kind of I picked up in the mainstream studio uh, studio is doing focus testing that um, I, I, it's, it's been kind of valuable to me. Uh, we we had we had it was a game it turned out it didn't get reviewed very well anyway, but uh, we had this game called Outwards for for, for we, Microsoft as a publisher and. Uh, we had this focus test, and in focus test, these guys were complaining about the action levels, that it needs more action, it needs more action, it needs more action. We had so much action, we had so much <laughs> bullets flying at them, these guys would die in 10 seconds, and they still thought it was too slow. And, and so we were like, what do we do? What do we do? And we were just trying to figure out all these things that, to, that, that their complaints. And then um, our audio chief, uh, Sandy, she was a you know, brilliant engineer turned music stuff and uh she she she's she changed out the audio track and changed it to a new audio track that was a lot higher energy and a lot faster paced audio so we had these testers who were complaining about the game being too slow and too boring and not enough action 
and we had them play exactly the same game they played before with a different soundtrack, and they were like, oh, yeah, you guys nailed it. That's exactly what we were going for. And we were like, it's the same game. You're just listening to different music. Um, and the lesson I learned from that and a few others where people were uh, complaining about things is a lot of times you need to look past their actual, their literal complaint, and you kind of need to look underneath. And it, you know, t it takes a, a bit of a scope. You know, if you, because there's some guys. I mean, they'll complain about something, you fix it. They'll complain about something else, you you fix it. They'll complain, and it will be a never-ending, you know, thing. You'll be working on your game for nine years, and they'll never be happy because you're never getting at the root cause of what the complaint is. Um, and so a lot of, and it's hard. I mean, you have to do a lot of guesswork because most of the time, I mean, I've done this as a player myself. I don't know exactly what it is that's driving me nuts. I just know it's, there's something getting at me and I, you know, I can, I can kind of shoot a few things around it, but I don't really know what's, what's, what's really a problem is. So, um, I, I would say to all these designers, you know, out there, you know, mainstream or indie, you know, take the criticism with a grain of salt or in some cases a small Siberian salt mine. Uh, <laughs> but, um, Taking a shot of tequila. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but, uh, but try and look at, at what's past that at some of the root causes because it may, they may be talking about one thing, but their problem might be something a little lower level. So. You made uh, Frayed Nice with only $6,500. I mean, I guess that's a substantial sum, you know, but compared to what a you know a mainstream game would cost, yeah, that's I mean, a couple think, semesters of my daughter's education. Dang it! <laughs> I mean, do you feel like that's a you know a reasonable sum to uh, you know to begin with, or did you find yourself always uh, need, needing more money? And I'm also kind of curious, you know, where did the sixty-five hundred dollars go? You know, what did you, <laughs> how did you spend it? Okay, well. Um... As far as if, you know, it really depends upon the game. I mean, if you're, especially if you're one of these people that I really hate who have programming skill and artistic skill and game design skill, um, damn them. <laughs> uh, you know, you could do it pretty much for free. I mean, there's enough free engines and free stuff out there. You can make a game that could, you know, do, do I mean, I mean, I don't know what. Uh, Notch's budget was originally for Minecraft, but you know he he catered the game to his style, what he was capable of doing, uh, as far as the art and stuff is concerned, and and played to his strengths. And I don't think he had much of a budget at all, other than keeping himself alive for several months, which can get very expensive because I think he was doing this full time. But he had another like an MMO. He was getting some. I don't know. I I can't really repeat his story. I only know a little bit of it, but. Um, you know, you can you can do things fairly cheap, um, especially if you don't consider the number of hours that you put into a game, which is pretty much take your most conservative estimate, double it, and then double it again, and then double it again, and that's pretty much where it's it's actually going to be. Um, but you know, you can do it on the cheap. A bigger game, I'm afraid Nights. I mean, it's a 30 plus hour RPG with 3D graphics. I was so, you know, in some cases so stupid like doing this. I could probably have done something in 2D, a lot simpler, using RPG Maker or something like that, and put the same, you know, a quarter of the effort into it, and and done better <laughs> and much more successful, and it would have cost me a lot less money. Um, but uh, you, you have to, it really depends upon the type of game you're making. And you don't be like me. Here I am, I'm the hypocrite. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Um, you know, make a game of the correct scope and style that fits your strengths of you and whoever you've got working with you. Um, as far as where the money went, uh, boy, I, I've got a list downstairs because I have to ask myself that question all the time because I can't believe I spent that much money on the game, uh, which was just supposed to, I mean, it was, I don't know. Was that way more uh, than you expected it, to spend? It is, it is more than I expected to spend, but compared to a lot of the indie games that are out there, especially guys doing a full-time who don't uh, charge zero for their hours, which is really stupid of me to do, but, you know... Yeah, yeah, you, you take what you can get. You know, if we were to actually apply hours, um, I think I need to sell like 50 times as many copies of the game as I have now before I would may have made minimum wage. <laughs> it would have been a lot better for me to just flip burgers and you know play games instead. Um, but uh, but making games is more fun. 
Um, there's a lot of it. There's stuff that goes into tools, into your game engine. Uh, you know, and I, I did everything indie priced. I mean, you know, sixty-five hundred dollars in, in terms of making a game is is nothing. And a lot of these indies are spending a lot more money on that. I mean, they'll spend that much on the soundtrack. Um, but um, uh, there was, uh, you know, I, 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 I did a lot of abusing of friends in this game uh, when I was making this. Guys with, uh, you know, musical ability or artistic ability. I'm like, can you help me out with my game? And I, ca I can't really pay you what you're worth, but I hear, you know, I have, have a couple hundred dollars to, <laughs> to make up for it. You know, so they're, you know, they're earning less than minimum wage. And, you know, I, I think I... But it's, you know, it's a country. I'm not paying them by the hour. I'm just saying, if you, you know, do this concept art for me, please. Okay, thank you. Here's, you know, here's a token of my appreciation. That's really all it comes down to. Um, and so there was, there was a lot of that. I, I did use an awful lot of uh, off-the-shelf content for the game, um, which, you know, shows people. I thought when I first started this, I'm like, wow, this is great. Indie games now. There's so much content that you can get, you know, you just buy these 3D models or buy these texture packs and everything, which is great if they're all from the same artist in the same style. <laughs> but when you're, you're going there and there's this one that looks photorealistic and there's this one that looks cartoony, trying to <laughs> make them both look like they belong in the same world. I mean, it, we, we did our best and there's, you know, there's still some stuff that just, you know, doesn't, doesn't look as, as good as I would like in Freight Nights. Um, so uh, some of it went into that. Some of it goes into promotion. Um, there is there is some stuff, some tools. <laughs> There's a couple of tools I ended up buying that I never actually ended up using. Um, they, you know, it was one of those, you know, seems to be a good idea at the time. Um, you know, this, this tool is going to be make everything magically wonderful. And I'll be able to be <laughs> ten times more productive with this thing. And, you know, you start using it and you realize, okay, this crashes after a half an hour uh, every time I use it. Uh, it. It doesn't do this. It doesn't do that. You know, and, and you're like, great, I just wasted a hundred bucks. Cool. Um, so, you know, just a lot of little things that went into. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the art, uh, the artist uh, that did the the cover art and the character portraits, you know, a lot went into that. Um, and uh, anyway, just those things add up. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll be back next week with the fourth and final part of my interview with Jay. Follow that with a retrospective, and then we'll hear from Mark Soderwall. A lot of great stuff coming up, so stay tuned. As always, I want to thank everyone who has donated and uh, supported this show. If you'd like to do so yourself, uh, you can follow the links in the show notes or go to armchairarcade.com and you can set up a subscription or uh, just make a one-time payment. Either way, you'll be putting a little something in my stocking and uh, keeping these interviews coming. So thank you very much for your support. You also uh, may have noticed this beautiful, beautifully awesome uh, t-shirt that I'm wearing. This is the official Dark Star t-shirt um, by sent to me by Jeff Williams, the creator of Dark Star. Now, if you haven't played this game, I don't know what's wrong with you. You can uh, purchase it, and uh, you'll soon, on December 9th, be able to get a European release from Lace Mamba. So hopefully some uh, details will be forthcoming. I'll post a link to, uh, uh, to the Dark Star homepage on, uh, on the show notes uh, uh, for this episode. So if you'd like to learn more about Dark Star, you can uh, follow those links. Anyway, as always, I want to end with a quotation, uh, this time from Mark Twain. And it goes something like this. The critic symbol should be the tumble bug. He deposits his eggs in other people's dung. Otherwise, he could not hatch them. See you guys next week. I told the captain I'd have this analysis done in an hour. How long would it really take? An hour? Oh, you didn't tell him how long it would really take, did you?